Why does it got to be so like chemical peel, lasers? Why don't they make like better names for these things? You know what I mean? Well, like chemical fluffy peel. bunny, you want it in the woods? You know, like. You or, want it in the woods? I don't know. I was like, <laughs> I was trying to think of something like, you know, nice. Fluffy nature. bunny, you want it in the woods? That it, sounds so bad. Was it sound dirty? Like a porno? Yes. Fluffy bunny, you want to <laughs> do it? Or not do it. You <laughs> wow. Yay Networks. Hey guys, episode 41. Before we get started, Jeff wants to say something. Well, I just want to say thank you, first of all, for everybody, to everybody for listening. You know, we've been on for a couple of months now and the feedback has been wonderful. But last week's episode, if you tuned in, you know, was a, a little scary for me, right? To post. We weren't really sure. We were kind of nervous about, po if you don't know what we're talking about, it's episode 40. We were both a little nervous about putting that out there. Right. We pulled back the curtain a little bit, but I was just giving my side of the story and the feedback really has been spectacular. I almost got emotional. Jordan was reading all the comments to me on the way home, both from the YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and, uh, and the support has been overwhelming. It, you guys really made me feel good. A lot of you who have been listening have been, you know, with us since the beginning, since the beginning of Big Brother. So I really appreciate that feedback. And again, I hope I didn't sound like a victim at all. I was just trying to tell my side of the story. And uh, I guess, you know, like I said, the feedback has been great. A couple of my friends already re reached out to me. And this is Wednesday. So the just again, we always update you on the timeline of what's going on. Wednesday, the podcast just came out, you know, um, hours ago. And, and the feedback has just been overwhelming. I appreciate all the support. I know, like, I don't need a pat on the back for my wrongdoings. But, you know, I try to learn from those wrongdoings. Everything I do now, now I'll get emotional, is because, you know, I want to be a better father, a better person. And, you know, getting some of these things off my chest is therapeutic for me. So I do everything now for my kids. I'm not the same guy I was. 15 years ago. I'm not the same guy I was seven years ago. I think I really changed once we had children, you know, and everything. I don't think anybody's the same person they were 10 years ago. I know, I know, but it's, it, I don't know why it was so scary that last episode or to get that off my chest. I just did, I didn't want to offend anybody or again, try to play the victim card and, uh, you know, for whatever happened to me, there was a reason for it, you know, and I just wanted to get my story out there. It made me feel better and the support makes me feel better. So, uh, you know, I'm thankful for you guys. And I just want to say thank you. We've only been doing this podcast a couple months, and the community that we have built with this podcast is amazing. Like, you all are so supportive. You, you're you just, you're exactly what we want, listener-wise. Seriously. It's exactly, what I mean by that is I want people to tune into this podcast, and if you've had a bad day at work, or if you're just or you're just having a bad day, life isn't going great. I want you to tune into the podcast and laugh with us, cry with us. And it's we talk about sometimes we talk about important things like what you talked about, getting things off your chest, right. things that have happened. And then other times we're talking about nonsense. And it's great because this podcast, it's not like something you have to sit and listen to you can miss a couple parts and tune right back in and we just want people to be happy and people to feel good and people to come together and i feel like this community we have built with you all for the couple of months that we've been doing this is awesome from the og people that have been with us since day one a big brother the j joe fans like uh ladies everyone else um to day one um who else and then even new people who are like i have no idea who you are i just found your podcast by scrolling yeah which is amazing and that's what we want i want people to feel good and this podcast is real authentic we want why are you, are you laughing? making a commercial for this thing no i'm just saying i'm just saying thank you and you guys are just you guys are great yeah. And more than anything, a safe space, right? That's what I think a lot of the problems and what I was addressing last week is that we can't communicate anymore, you know, like in politics, definitely not. But just in general, like if you have something to say, 
put it on the table. I'm, I'm open to all opinions. I'm glad the feedback was amazing. And obviously, if people listen to us, they're going to support us. But even if you don't agree with everything we say, that's okay. We're supposed to be able to put our differences on the table and talk about it. That's what families used to do back in the day. And now it seems like the division is like, you know, an unclimbable mountain that we have in this country now and it's like neighbors are divided family members communities and it's like man we need to get back to a place where we could just talk about things and disagree but at the end of the day sit down and break some bread together and you know have a good time I, I feel like we're missing that so me expressing some of those feelings got that off my chest and it made it feel like it was okay to say some of those things exactly. even though I'm not trying to offend anybody put anyone in their place victimize myself none of that just have a conversation you're very good with your words me not so much <laughs> no I'm not you know I like I said I'm trying to learn right that the last four years taught me a lot it taught me a lot so I don't want to go back to that place I want to move forward like I said thank you guys so much for for all the great feedback and supporting us and and all that good stuff, really. I really mean that, and I don't say that a lot, but yeah, I really do mean that. I do say it a lot. But. Yeah, and uh, that's we just wanted to start the podcast off just by saying thank you. Yeah, but. so the reason why we're filming this on Wednesday, now we'll jump ahead a little bit, so a week later, is because tomorrow on Thursday <laughs> after work, I'm getting this Jordan, of course, uh, influenced me to get this <laughs> thing called a halo facial. No, halo laser. Even worse. So, so I was like, I'm getting, honey, I shrunk Jeff's face. <laughs> There's a laser involved. I, I have to take a day off of work because of this thing. So I need it's the like an intense laser. Yeah, I need the weekend to recover. So hopefully next time you guys see me, I'm not, you know, I don't look like E.T. Unlike me, who gets a chemical peel and comes on this podcast with skin flaking. <laughs> Jeff's like, there's no way I'm doing the podcast with my face if it looks bad. So that's... Yeah, because I'm taking a day off of work. I'm not going to come on here. I don't really know exactly what it's going to look like, but you're in good hands. And your face is going to look so good. I tell him all the time, I'm like, you're on TV and you don't like doing injections and things like that. So like using a good medical grade skincare... Laser. And then getting laser... It's really going to help your, it's going to help your face, going to help your lines. You're going to be 46 this year. You're not, you're no spring chicken. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I need to do some maintenance. I, and I like, I've done Botox in the past a couple of times. I'm not a huge fan. One time it like, my eyebrows were all crazy. I got the Spock eyebrows and they remember. I always, <laughs> it, I haven't had Botox since like September, October, something like that. And my eyebrows automatically have a high arch so I'm always like make sure they go down and not up because I can't afford but I always have to go back and because I always get kind of like a Spock eyebrow if I do Botox but if you just stick with like I said the lasers and medical grade stuff you don't have to do injections your face your skin will look healthy refreshed and good especially too because you're putting on makeup every day you're gonna have better looking skin than me all right, well, that's, my melasma that's the plan. right now is flared up. It looks pretty bad right now. So, oh, well, you need to make yourself an appointment. I know. Well, if anything goes wrong, it's your fault. Well, that's what I worry about. I'm like, <laughs> if any one little thing, because I know Jeff, if you're going to be like, what, wait, why does it look like this? What, What's this? Am I, is this going to go away? And my face is super sensitive. So I'm going to be red. But like well, you already have great skin. You really do. But your mom, her skin is great. Yeah. She's got like white porcelain skin. Well, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. And then next week we'll talk about how all that goes down. But I remember when I got my eyebrows done, I didn't even notice like when I got Botox, not my eyebrows. When I got Botox, my eyebrows went up. I was like, uh, I didn't even notice. I'm like, man, I'm going to get carded, you know, this weekend. And everyone's like, dude, your eyebrows look crazy. And we filmed the intro <laughs> to Daily Blast Live. And they, <laughs> they took a part from the show where I'm like, are you insane? And that's how we started every show. And my eyebrows were way <laughs> up here. And every day, like before we start the show, I'm like, why did they pick that photo of me to, to do that? They probably did it. And they like laugh like every day. To make you laugh. Yeah. Or to make fun of you. And I'm saying, are you insane? And my eyebrows were like above my head, like a cartoon. And then remember, I just went and went bink, bink, and then they came down. Yep. 
Yeah. So I'm a, I was nervous about that. So I'm definitely nervous about this uh, Halo. You're going to look so good after. And my, so I didn't even tell you, one of my buddies from college is like, hey, we're coming in this weekend. Who? My buddy Burke. Oh, okay. And he's like, we're coming in this weekend. So he's going to come in. I'm going to look like Leatherface. And then there's great fights on this weekend, UFC 300. So everyone's going to be socializing. And I'm going to have to come out with like a beekeeper's helmet so I don't get any sun on my face. Now you know what I go through. Oh, yeah, you got to avoid the sun. I know it's going to be 70, 72, 75 Saturday, Sunday, or Friday, Saturday, Sunday this weekend. Yeah. I mean, yes. Because <laughs> I know. I know what it's like. I want to get, but I chickened out. I had an appointment. The Cosmo, it's a Cosmolin peel. And you put it, they put it on your face, and I believe you leave it on for 10 hours. It looks like you have peanut butter on your face. And your LA is the only place that offers it until one of LA's finest moved to Denver and opened up a place here in Denver and she offers it. And I was going to do it last year and I chickened out because I got so scared because your face is basically melted off. And it, See, I, I got not know this is worth this. Like, I hope there's a noticeable difference like when I'm done because it's going to take like five to seven days to recover she showed me photos like someone like me who has i have really bad melasma and um that's why i always get i have like a routine that i do so in the fall winter months it's lasers and then springtime comes and then it's like i don't get injections or lasers until the fall again so i kind of i just have like a little routine i do but i am going to do a chemical peel because chemical peels are more affordable they're like 250 instead of like uh halo why does it got to be so like chemical peel lasers why don't they make like better names for these things you know what i mean well, like chemical fluffy peel. bunny you want it in the woods you know like you or, want it in the woods i don't know i was like <laughs> i was trying to think of something like you know nice fluffy nature. bunny you want it in the woods that sounds so bad. Was it sound dirty, like a porno? Yes. Fluffy bunny, you want to do it? Or not do it. You wanna... Wow. No, I didn't mean I was trying hair. to think of something soft and cuddly, like Snuggles, the fabric softener guy. No. Well, you know what I'm getting I at. know. Instead of vampire facial, like that, these names are like a little intimidating. Well, I think for you, because you're a first timer. But once you start, you did the you'll never, facial. I did, and I love crazy. it. Crazy. Well, they take, if you don't know what a vampire facial is, they take your blood, and then they spin it in some machine, I don't know the medical terminology, and something about, what is it, like PRP? So you can inject that, they inject you under your eyes instead of doing filler, you're using your own blood to inject back under your eyes I'm not a medical professional so somebody's totally going to correct me on this um but I'm too scared to do that but it's your own it's your own stuff from your body and then they take it and put it on your face and then the um the blood yeah and then the micro needling they go deep and then your skin looks great after it's all glowing Yes, I'm a little nervous about it. To be I can't, the only thing I would say is kind of smells a little bit, and you got to leave it on, like once it's the blood. Done. Yeah, you leave. It's not like blood. That once they spin it, it turns like a yellow, like a white yellow color. Your blood does. Yeah, it's something that they do when they spin it. We, I have to. We need to get. Yeah, oh, somebody's listening out the there. Guy? Now, like, you don't know what you're talking about. We don't know what we're talking about. Who's the, uh, who's your friend now? He's like your BFF now. Oh, uh, Doctor You. Oh, Dr. Yoon. Yeah, he's Yoon? on Daily Blast That's Live. That's who we need time. on here. Dr. Yoon, you probably know him from like Good Morning America. He's on like all the shows Listen, now. Listen, if you don't, if this is a follow, follow, I think it's Dr. Yoon MD or something. I got to, I think that's what it is. On Instagram, if, when I'm scrolling through Instagram, I was telling me like, what is that? And then Dr. Yoon's head like pops up and he's like pointing at someone's like butt or something oh, or like yeah. some weird uh facial thing they've done or something so he he's the best we have him on the show all the time he's super entertaining i love his and uh, he's a good follow if you're into that kind of stuff i wish he lived here in denver because i want my implants taken out you hear all the time about this implant illness and i i just want my implants completely out 
in uh, Dr. Yoon seems perfect because he's a holistic. Yeah, he's a holistic. I'm looking up his name right now. Oh, I already looked up the information. He's like on this super long wait, but he's in Detroit. That's too far to go. Way to keep talking while I'm looking oh, this up. Oh, sorry. Um, by the way, I just have to say, I'm so proud of Lawson. Uh, while Jeff was in Wyoming, Lawson had his first lacrosse game. I wasn't expecting much because he missed three lacrosse practices because of the strep throat. Then he got an infection in his mouth from the strep throat. And he scored a goal. He was playing like he had played before. I was so proud of him. I wanted to cry. I know, and I missed that. We're going to get into this weekend and stuff. But I found it. it's Tony Yoon MB. Tony Yoon MB. Yeah, give him a follow. Y O U N. He's, he's got a he. Even if you don't like plastic surgery, his personality. He's very knowledgeable. But he's the one we need to talk to because I sound like an idiot when I'm talking about. I don't know anything. It's just a vampire facial. That's yeah. So, anyways, I'm getting that done, and uh, next week we'll obviously talk a little bit more about it. We're gonna take a break, but I want to get back into last weekend because I want to hear about loss and stuff, or maybe some people do. And uh, in my fishing trip, I'll touch on a little bit. Okay. All right, y'all know this is one of our favorites, AG1 over here. Okay, so I first gave AG1 a try because of Jeff. Jeff is the one that was a fan before AG1 became a sponsor on this podcast. And Jeff and the neighbors, friends, everybody would talk about it. I had no idea what AG1 was until you. So in January, I started using AG1. It's April. I can't go without it. I almost can tell when I miss my AG1. But like if I have a crazy morning and I accidentally forget it, because it's such a routine now. It replaces my coffee. Yeah, and I first gave it a try because I was taking way too many supplements. And I say that all the time. And AG1 has cut down my supplement intake to just a handful a day into, in addition to my daily routine of taking AG1. And I was a fan way before we started promoting it on our podcast. I give out, we have uh, sample packets and I give them out to neighbors. I'm like, do you want to try it? Because people who don't know what AG1 is, I'm like, no, you have to try it. When we went um, on our camping trip, I brought uh, travel packets and I was handing them out to the parents. <laughs> yeah, I bring it, I bring it everywhere. And another reason why I got AG1, because I always wanted to take like more probiotics, prebiotics to help my uh, digestive system, you know, oh, and my yeah. gut enzymes. And it's really important when you get older. And AG1 has all of that in there. That's because AG1 is a foundational nutrition supplement that supports your body's universal needs like gut optimization, stress management, and immune support. Since 2010, AG1 has led the future of foundational nutrition continuously refining their formula to create a smarter, better way to elevate your baseline health. Well said. And in addition to giving out packets all the time, we just went fishing, me and my buddies, this last weekend, and I gave out some AG1 packets to my buddies on the fishing trip. So there were long days, cold days, shorter nights, and I got to tell you, everyone said the same thing. Man, this AG1 really gave me a pickup. I just got a text from my dad's girlfriend's uh, cousin. She's like, my doctor told me to start taking AG1, and you've been talking about it on your podcast. And I go, let me find you the code. And I also heard once, and I don't know who it was, Deion Sanders or some football player, always said, if you look good, you play good. And that's how I feel about AG1. If I feel good, my day's going to be good. And I saw, always started off with AG1. Not to mention, the packaging makes you feel very important when you receive it in the mail. I say this every time. It's the scooping spoon. <laughs> the shaker, the way it's packaged, all of it. I love it. If there is one product I had to recommend to elevate your health, it's AG1. And that's why I'm excited to welcome them as a new partner. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase at drinkag1.com slash together miss. That's drinkag1.com slash together mess, M-E-S-S. You got to check it out. 
Welcome back. So, tell me about Wyoming. You, Jeff's got a story for you guys. Oh, about because I told you guys I was going fishing last weekend. We went. It was the best. So we went up to yeah. It was uh, Casper, Wyoming, is where we ended up fishing, and our guides were great. I should look up their names to or their were their outfitters out of, but it's out of Casper, and we had this guy Jaron and Jackson, and they were our guides, and it was the best fishing we've ever had the biggest fish we've ever had the most fish but i will say one thing wyoming is the windiest place maybe <laughs> on the whole planet on the i'm not even joking it's insane how windy it was and it was freezing freezing cold these guys so we did some if you guys ever f- tried fly fishing i don't know if you like fishing or not i'll just run through this quick we were in a boat and i've never done this before but you fly fish out of the boat which is a lot easier and but it's all in the guide. So he kind of rows you to the spots and you're going in a stream. It's a bigger stream, obviously. And he does everything for you. I had hand warmers, boots. I was bundled up. We were all bundled up. Like I said, we caught the most fish, but we were out there for six hours. Um, he was sending me pictures and videos while I was at the lacrosse game. You look, it looked like the most miserable trip to me. Why would you want to sit there and freeze and silence and fish why not go to like somewhere hot? Because we caught great fish and uh, and you threw them giant. Back in. Yeah, we threw them all back because they were a lot of them were pregnant, so they were spawning, so their eggs, you know, were about to hatch. So we had to put them back gently. You you handle trout really, real, real gent, gently. <laughs> Why well, didn't say it like that? You know what I mean? Otherwise, the eggs would like pop out. You know, okay. and just in general, you handle trout very gingerly. But it was a great trip. We had a great time. My buddy Steve and Tony. My buddy Tony caught the biggest fish. He wants me to tell everybody about it. His new nickname is Cutthroat. Tell, uh, tell everybody. Cut <laughs> <laughs> tell everybody. So Jeff calls, and what did you say? What? Love. We might have to sleep in our car. Oh, so this is after fishing. Yeah. So even going fishing, that getting up there was, you know, it actually was really nice. On that Friday, it was really beautiful. So it was great getting up there. But then the next morning. Uh, we get up early because we had to drive two hours. We were staying in Saratoga, uh, Wyoming, and we drove up to Casper. And it was a two-hour drive. And there's this Route 80 up there that they close all the time because of wind or accidents. And we got it. There was an accident when we were getting there. So it was like five in the morning. And we're like, oh, my God. We were just sitting there for like a half hour. And finally, we pulled a UE and did some magic tricks. And we were, we were an hour late. But the, like I said, the guides were great. So coming back from that, we were freezing. You know, we got in the car, warmed up, and we were about a half hour away from where we were staying in Saratoga. And they shut down the roads because of the wind. And we're like, wait, what do you mean shut down the roads again? So we pulled over at this gas station. They're like, yeah, you guys, you can't get back. You got to get a hotel. And I was like, what are you, what are you talking about? There's, we're a half hour away. There's no other, they won't let us through. Or there's no other way around. They're like, nope like no positivity at all so we drive around on this farmer's ranch like it's all i mean you're out there when i say you're out there you are you don't even see another car and then we're driving around on someone's property steve this driver's like dude this is how you get murdered we're, we're trying to find like back roads but everything's chained up so we go back we're driving around for like two extra hours we go back to the main city in rawlings and we're like we go to another gas station. We're like, seriously, guys, how do we get out of here? And they're like, you can't. And I was like, oh. You went back. Yeah, and we have like our fishing gear on still, you know, uh. like not the exact gear, like our waders and stuff, but just like underneath we were in them all day. We were cold, and I'm I'm like starting to get pissed off. I'm like, I'm just going to, I guess we're just going to get drunk at some hotel. I'm like, what's the nicest steakhouse you guys have here? And they were like writing down all this stuff for us, and we got Stacy. Shout out to Stacy and Brawlings gas station <laughs> she wrote down all this stuff for us like the hotel steakhouse like where to go and she goes here's your last chance this is the last back road and she goes no promises the cops are going to stop you and say what are you doing if you're not local they're going to turn you around i'm like well i gotta get out of here and then he calls and was like love we might sleep in the car and i was like not in the car yeah you told me that you no, in a hotel no you were like we might have to sleep because you were like uh, stuck over there you because at that time when you called you didn't have a hotel Oh you yeah, you were we freaking out, and yeah. I was like, "Well, have fun." <laughs> oh man, I was. Like, I was like, "You try, you chose to go there." I'm like, "Wow." I, but anyways, you. Yeah, so we out. did. So we went back on 80 to go this secret route. Long story short, and they opened up 80. So I guess they just opened and closed it at 
whatever they feel like if the winds are too high or whatever so we made it back to uh our airbnb and that's what i said i go how do what if like tr all these truckers for miles are lined up i'm like what if you got to get a load somewhere you know obviously you don't take 80 if you're a truck driver there must be like a thing don't take 80 but yeah we finally got back to our hotel then when we left the next morning to come back to denver luckily they didn't shut down the roads but it was way windier than it was when we were trying to get home last night. We saw like a dozen semis flipped over on the road because that's how windy it was. It dumps semis over. I'm never going to Wyoming. <laughs> it's super windy. I'm never going. Windoming. That's what I want, always wanted to go to Jackson Hole. Wyoming. Yeah. Well, that's Wyoming. Well, we can't drive through if we're going to get stuck. Anyways, great fishing, but I'm sad I missed Lawson's first lacrosse game and his first football Speaking game. Speaking of windy... I froze that game. All of us were. I had um, I had a beanie, like three layers of clothes on. It was for the wind was blowing like crazy. Um, that's another reason too why I was I was like he's probably not going to be into this. It's so cold. These kids are going to be freezing and didn't bother him all. Didn't phase him. Like I said, he scored a goal. He played like he didn't miss three practices. He was out there looking like he loved it he was getting aggressive i was like yeah lawson and yeah and he missed it. a couple practices because he was sick that mm -hmm. we talked about so i was worried about how he's gonna do and then i wasn't there which i felt terrible but then our neighbor whose kids on the team sent me a thing of him scoring a goal and i was like oh my god i felt like terrible he was so proud he I facetimed was, you and yeah. then you were like hey and he's like dad drop i'm like buddy i'm going through a tornado <laughs> right now <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah they he did good and then right after lacrosse we had to rush change clothes and go straight to flag football yeah oh, i'm clothes. sad i missed that and we did, obviously i didn't plan to miss that we just they happen to fall on the same dates but you're just gonna look like freddy krueger <laughs> no. um at this game <laughs> now i'm gonna go and meet all the new parents hey i'm jeff what's wrong with that guy's face i'm <laughs> Because I got to go Friday night to the lacrosse game. I feel like my wife maybe doing Saturday it. to the football game. So, oh my gosh. I'm going to have to get like big glasses. I'm going to have to borrow your like uh, those big black glasses you have. I got plenty. And we got that big hat from that brewery. We I'm were, have to wear. yeah, we were drinking at the brewery one day and the kids. Last summer. No, two summers ago. Oh, what? And the kids were mad because it was so hot. They were just gripey. They didn't have naps and we were, Jeff and I, we just wanted to listen to the band. And, you know, when your kids are younger, they just don't get it. It was burning hot. It was Speaking of hot. weather, are we complainers? We're weather complainers. Yeah. Well, I, the hotter, the better for me. And um, I'm like, Jeff, just go in. No, it was me. I was like, I'm just going to go get them a hat. So they're shaded. You guys, the hat was, I think, 40 or $50, the hat. It was like one of those big hats. But look, we've used it. I wear it when I do yard work sometimes. I'm going to be wearing it this weekend to yeah. stay out because it's going to be nice. Real quick, I just forgot a story about the fishing, and then we'll take a little break. Our guide, so our guide's like 22, and I'm like, and, uh, and Tony, last time we went fishing, one of our guides is like, hey, man, are you Jeff from Big Brother? And our guide like knew me from the show. So he's like, here, stand here. And I caught a couple fish right away. And Tony got super pissed. He's like, he put him on the spot because he was a big brother and he's playing favoritism. So, <laughs> so, oh. Me and Tony are in the boat together. And Steve was by himself with the other guide. And uh, Tony, he goes, Tony, what do you do? And Tony's like, oh, I coach, you know, jujitsu and stuff like that. And then he turns around, he goes, Jeff, what do you do? And he goes, here we go. And I'm like... <laughs> Oh my God. I go, I host this show on, you know, television back in Denver. And he's like, and Tony's like, don't play favoritism to him. <laughs> but Tony ended up catching the most fish and the biggest fish. But these guys, they were, so this guy used to be, I don't know how old these kids are, 25 years old. And he said he used to be a bull rider. Really? And I told him about when I, you know, tore my bicep on a bull. He's like, oh, really? You tried that one time? These kids were out, we were out there for six hours. I was in the back, like frozen, full of snow. Like my legs were shivering, like uncontrollably, but I was trying to knuckle up because no one else was complaining. These guys didn't even put gloves on the whole time. Their hands were beet red, rowing around, and then like they would tie our knots for us because fly fishing is a little different to tie. And they were tying knots after six hours in the freezing cold. I was like, these kids are so tough, and That's I'm such a wuss. Yeah, so tough. So I'm worried about this laser facial i got a wyoming cowboy up and 
Yeah. Tough. Yeah. So shout out to Jaron from Wyoming Jared? Outfitters. I like that name. Yeah, Jared. He's super cool. Cal- like the calmest guy you've ever met. I don't know. I can't say no. I want to be my friend. But... The opposite of you Chicago guys? Yeah, I'm like, are you on Instagram? He's like, nah. I'm like, do you, do, are you going to go watch the basketball games tonight? The NCAA? He's like, nah. He's like, I'm just going to go fish. I'm going to wake up and go fish tomorrow. Aww. He just fishes. I love country people. Yeah. Anyways, I thought I had to give a shout out to those guys again because I was like in the back, like, I got to toughen up. These kids are like, they could kill me. Yeah, that's me tough. The yeah. mentally tough. All right, let's take a break and we'll come right back. Welcome back. Did I bore you with my fishing stories? Everybody out there tuned out already. I hope. No, I mean, I. We did say <laughs> you were so bored. You know, what's funny when we were in the boat or like, I'm sorry, on the after we were done, I go, Tone, could you imagine if our wives were here? And he goes, are you crazy? Uh, I would get a divorce. Like six hours. Tony, of I have there. to say this. Tony's wife is the calmest uh, person I've ever met in my life. She would probably sit there and freeze and not complain one bit. Me, I'd be like, Jeff, we're getting a divorce. I would be so mad and angry. Oh, yeah. Me and, he, me and you would fight. Yeah, but Lisa they're, is like the sweetest. Yeah, they're ying to each other's yang. Yeah. But anyways, we'll, I'm done with the fishing. I'm done boring people up. It was a great trip. Sorry. I'm excited about it. Well, good. You like fishing. Yeah, I do like it. You need to go with your dad. Yes, definitely. Um, Okay, so switching gears. I saw, like I always say I do. Um, My dad's the one who taught me to fish, by the way. (laughs) All right, I'm done with fishing. (laughs) We used to go fishing every year with my dad. But yeah, go ahead. You want to add anything else about fishing? I love you, Dad. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so uh, I saw this thing on Instagram, like this over-the-top, gender reveal party that somebody had and i was telling jeff when we were pregnant with or when i was pregnant with lawson i felt like maybe i'm behind but i felt like we we were pregnant i I, no i switched it and then i said i think some people are like we're pregnant right (laughs) (laughs) don't you think oh you know what i mean like yay we're pregnant we're having a baby like yeah instead of just be like yeah my wife's pregnant they're like we're pregnant well, I met, okay, I'm uh, pregnant. I Todd, get in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when I was pregnant with Lawson, I felt like that was when gender reveals were a thing, right? Yeah. I felt like it was big. We did one, but ours was, I wore Jeff's white tee or white tank top, and we just put blue. No, so one prints. day we did... Just the hands, like my, our hands together. And then the next day we did the open hands. Yeah. Like that was our reveal. Like on your was stomach. like the cheapest reveal. And we just did it for the internet. It was me, you, and Louie. It was safe. And we were, yeah, it was nice. Yeah. And then there's these crazy over-the-top gender reveals. But I feel like I'm not seeing them as much. Do you think if you were invited, because we've never been invited to a gender reveal party it's probably because we made it clear we don't like birthday parties or we don't like any type of party if you were invited to let's say tony let's say tony was having a gender reveal which we know that would never happen um would you go and would you be like oh my god like all excited like how everybody's cheering you know everybody makes a big deal about it yeah i would be like i don't care good job No, well, sometimes now, just with everything, like if you cheer the loudest, you care the most, you know? Yeah, that's how people are. But do you think they're necessary? Um, Some of these are super, like, elaborate, huge parties, you know, with people who have a lot of money. Like that one you're talking about, the flyover, they had three jets. Like, that had cost a ton of money. So I'm guessing at parties, they probably got, like, a lot of crab cakes and stuff, you know? I'm down. Well... Oh, yeah, you would be in line. You'd be more concerned about the food. Yeah, if they got like crab cakes and seafood towers. No, I, mean, I can yeah, see. Yeah, I get what you're having a boy. I can see if somebody was having trouble getting pregnant and then got pregnant and then had a gender reveal. And that's like a big moment to celebrate. Like if you were going through the struggles trying to get pregnant and then you finally, that's something I feel like to celebrate. But I feel like gender re- gender reveals now it's just like what's the point well they've gone too far kind of like everything there's else. a party for every little thing yeah it's it's gone too far and then what you got to bring a present 
I don't know because I've never been involved. Is a bottle of wine sufficient for a gender reveal party? Well, the... Or do you got to bring a toy? Like, do you have to bring a, a baby present? And then you have but a shower? But you're finding out then. You're That's finding... what I'm saying. And then you have a shower on top of the baby reveal? Now I got to bring two presents? <laughs> right? I got COVID. I'm like, I can't come. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. Yeah, that's interesting. I never thought about that. Right? But does it, with the gender reveal, I've always wondered this. Do the parents know what it is they're surprising the Somebody group? knows. That's yeah, what I'm saying. Of course, one parent knows. But I sometimes when I see the gender reveal, like you know somebody what falls to... to their knees crying. And I'm like, wait, maybe they didn't know. Maybe the sister knew. So how does that work? So maybe you get like an envelope from the doctor and then you give it to the balloon like, guy and you're like, hey, put this color in the balloon, but don't tell us. Yeah, they probably do. Well, what, <laughs> what if they made a mistake? And you're like, oh, oh my God, we have that the girl. And then happen. you read the paper and you're like, what? That has it's happened real. before. Somebody out there is listening and they're like, no, idiots, it's like this. Or they're the, those funny videos where they go to like pop it open and nothing happens. It doesn't pop like oh like yeah, yeah, yeah doesn't fly out and they're just waiting yeah there's got to be a way right and if one person doesn't know i don't know i would you don't know i was just kind of laughing because i'm like wait how did we find out do you remember how we found out with laws did we ever share this i don't i don't know okay at we some have point a video we you recorded me oh i did you have a video of me oh we i don't break think it after i think you cut it because i was just i did remember putting it, was it down. very hormonal very if we have the video we'll insert it here but if not i don't know i do remember i remember exactly where we were we were in our tiny apartment and we were against like the entryway door right mm -hmm. yes i do re i could like visualize that and the nurse was like are you excited that's right. And I knew. And I was holding this. No, we we were recording because I was on the speakerphone. Yeah, you were recording me because you want to get my reaction, and then I think you <laughs> stop recording because I just started crying. I did because I thought I was having a girl, and I wanted a girl, and they told me that we were having a boy, and I go a boy and then i just start i walked away and i just started to like cry <laughs> there was a lot going on at that time like we had to cancel our wedding i know we set, shared this but we canceled our wedding in mexico i was still processing that i was pregnant and by the way when i found out i was pregnant i was 12 weeks pregnant it wasn't like you know oh we're only just a couple weeks yeah. i was we, lawson was he had arms, legs, everything. He's just little. And I was so upset and I walked away. And then I was like, why <laughs> to you? I was like, why do you always get everything that you want? And I start going off on you and you stop recording. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, I'm always around boys because my buddies are always yes. awkward. And, and I was like, I don't want to be around any more boys. I want oh a my girl. God. And then now... Oh gosh. Now when I think of it, because I'm on my period right now and I've been very emotional. I've lately. been a little emotional lately. I don't know what's going on. I was wondering. I was like, did the solar eclipse? You know they were saying that. Get out of here. <laughs> no, for a second I thought you were pregnant. Cause I was I'm like, maybe it was like the podcast from last week. I I've been a little emotional lately. I've been like late night when my buddy's out fishing. I like got a little emotional at one point. <laughs> I was we were talking because they're my buddies for like way back when, like you know, what neighborhood kids, and uh, and I don't know, I got a little emotional about something. But anyways, I was like, dude, why am I getting all emotional? I like getting emotional, but it's a little more than late than and today. You're like, I started my period. I was like, all right, well, that's well, I told him last night. Normally, because I'm you know I'm taking these weight loss shots, I'm not really hungry, and I was like. Jeff, I like just want chips and salsa. And that's how I was when I was pregnant with Lawson. And I started crushing chips and salsa. And normally that would make me sick at night. Kind of like a and then I told Jeff this morning while I'm holding my box of tampons, I go, hey, guess what? I wanted those chips and salsa because I started my period. And then you were just like, oh my God, get away from me. But we need to get a door on that shower. Why? I don't know. You just have conversations and I'm just <laughs> naked in there. It's fine. But, you know, everyone just, we're very comfortable in our house with 
going to the bathroom you're and showers. You're worried about me talking to you while you're naked in the shower, and I'm no, we, sitting I mean, here pushing a baby out of my hula, and you're seeing everything, and you're seeing my insides when I'm from like a C-section, and you're worried about being no. seen naked. Okay, okay. You've seen the worst of worst of me. All right, you brought a gun to a knife fight, okay? <laughs> uh, you win, you win. What I'm saying is, I'm just like showering in the morning, you know, I'm naked, and you just got a box of tampons, and you're like, hey, remember chips and salsa? I'm like, maybe wait five more seconds and I'll be out. <laughs> We're just having a conversation. <laughs> it's fine, I mean, I don't mind it, but now that I look No, back, but he, I can tell, he gives me that look like you're annoyed that I'm talking to you, and I'm just like, I'm getting myself ready. Boys are getting ready for school and I only got a short amount of time to talk to you. So I'm trying to like talk to you and I, you're like watching yourself and I can tell you're annoyed that I'm- Well, also first of all, I have like, I put a radio on in there. So I have music going and the shower's going in my ear and in my face and stuff. And she's like, hey, did you pay the HOA bills? This? I'm like, what? I'm like, what's happening? Wait one second, I'm almost out. So we have like a walk in like kind of shower where there's not a door, that's why it's open, but we should get a door in there. But you like start up these conversations when I can't hear. And then she goes, you're going deaf. I'm in the shower with the radio on. What do you mean I'm going deaf? But I want, I want to like talk. And then it's like. Wait, I, I, my showers are 45 seconds. No, but then after the shower, he comes out and then you're doing your lotion and all that stuff. And you still got Joe Rogan playing or it's some. Or my morning meeting. Or your morning meeting. And you're just sitting there and I'm like trying to have a quick conversation with you and you're not just not having it. And I'm like, whatever. Well, a lot so of times like, it's my... like what we're doing that day on our show. So I'm trying to listen to the stories. No, and... that's when you're downstairs in the kitchen cooking. That's when you're in your morning meeting while you're cooking. Wow, you got a time. I already know. Going on. Yeah, because I know exactly when I leave the house, I have everything time. By the time I wake up, when the boys need to be ready and showered, when they need to be downstairs, because I know how long it takes them to eat and how slow they are. Like I'm very like, I don't like being late. I don't either. Yeah. <laughs> What's up with that dead air? You had something on your mind. What else did you want to get off your chest? I don't know. We were talking about something. I'm trying to go back to what we were talking about. Oh, yeah. And what, now what I about? don't even remember what we were talking about. Wow. I what a surprise. We back. went off on a tangent. Yeah. What were you talking about? A something baby with reveals? babies. The re gender reveal? Oh, talking about being emotional and stuff. Oh. With Lawson... When, um, I, like you said, I don't know. I was thinking of something the other day and I got all teary eyed and emotional in the car because I was, don't ask me why it was making me think about, cause now I couldn't see myself. Now I wouldn't want a girl. I want, I love having boys. And if I ever ha got pregnant again, I would only want a boy. You know, what's weird that painting. Cause I used to do like paintings and stuff. Cause I was out of work when we lived in LA. So I'd paint stuff. <laughs> And I have that painting. If you ever come over, I paint like a couple of pictures. And one of them is two people like walking in the and moonlight. Then, yeah. And if you notice, the kid in the middle is a, a girl. Because I convinced him that it was a girl. Yeah. And I painted a little girl in there. And then in the moon, I made like those old school like palm prints that look like baby feet, you yeah. know? But yeah, uh, that's but I, how convinced you had me that we were having a girl. I really did. I thought, and I got so emotional because I was in the car and I heard this song. It was like this sad song. And I was so mad and upset at myself that I cried for how I acted for finding out I'm having a boy. And then I started feeling bad. Then I'm like, what is wrong with me? Why am I so emotional about What's that? What's going on? <laughs> I don't know, my hormones, period. And I just started, now my period. And I'm, I, I don't know if this is scientific or not, but when Jordan's emotional, I get emotional. Like, I'm not even joking. I, I'm not emotional. Well, I am emotional, but it's You like, used to, old Jeff was not emotional. Yeah. New Jeff, it, older Jeff, it gets emotional. Once we had kids, you got very emotional. Very emotional. And when she was going through postpartum, I, it, I was going through it. Like, mini postpartum i don't know what it's like and then you got emotional now there's like some weird connection i don't know why why it does that when it's it, real when i was like really mad at him when we got in this really big fight like what a month or two ago we shared that you come downstairs and you're like all right and then you were like already emotional because i was like still like holding my ground like i'm not giving up with <laughs> like giving in you know yeah what's up i don't know i didn't I don't know. Maybe it's these shots. Maybe it's your period. I have no idea. But well, why just, do I get emotional? Like you love us. I do. I do. But and it's weird why. how that works. 
Well, I get emotional if you get emotional when you were talking about that stuff last week and your eyes got watery. I have to, while you're talking, keep talking to myself in my head so I don't cry. I do. Like, if someone's eyes are watery, oh, yeah. I, I, I immediately start crying, too. Yeah. I'm very, maybe I'm just a sympathetic man. You're, uh, the older you get, you're a little more sensitive. You get mad about dumb things, parking spots, and yeah. things like that, but you're very... I'm very emotional on both sides. I love hard and I hate hard. You know, you're sensitive. You're like Lawson. Lawson's sensitive. Yeah, he is. Lawson has a temper, but he's sensitive. Yeah. And then Leighton, <laughs> I don't know yet. He's still young. We got to figure it out. But you do. You get, you feel guilty. You start, I was thinking about things in the past, like when he was younger. And I'm like, I should have been, if y'all noticed, I, like this past week, I just posted law and I'm going long and I'll stop talking. No, no. It's uh, Lawson's lacrosse game. And I just posted that, but I was like, I get burned out, re like with social media sometimes. Just I don't. It just kind of consumes you sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I took a break, and I was like, oh, just I did yard work. I was sitting outside. I read books. I my mm -hmm. aunt told me to get this book. It's called uh, "Praying Scriptures Over Your Children," and I've been reading that. And then it's um, I don't know. Like, I, I felt so good. Like, my mood instantly shifted just from taking that break on Instagram. And I felt like I was such a better mom. I felt like I was more present. I felt, I just felt good. I think it's because it's the negativity surrounded with social media. I know what you're talking about because I kind of am staying away from uh, social media as well. But that's why I think maybe this past week I was worried about, you know, the repercussions or whatever. And I feel like I'm setting myself up. Like, if you're surrounded by positivity, right? You put positive things into your life. You know, you start noticing things, your family, your wife, your, how great your neighborhood is. You start appreciating things a little bit more instead of keeping your head down and looking at Instagram and worried about what people think that you don't even know or care about, yeah. you know? And you really got to focus in on what's important and what, you know, how great things are no matter where you are in life. It's good to be alive. Because it's so easy. It sounds cheesy, but... No, but it's so easy on Instagram to compare yourself and yeah. to compare your life. like Or beat yourself up, too. Yeah. You know? And, or, you know, this person seems like they have it easier with their kids. Why are their kids so good? Why are their kids doing that? You know, and then you compare, and then you're like, you know what? And once you're off of it, it feels, it's so nice. <laughs> yeah, just, I don't know. I, and it's like, I, you know, with the, it's, you have to. Like, us doing the podcast, that's how I, on Instagram, help. Promote the podcast and do things and active on there. Yeah. Yeah. Usually I'm a post and ghoster. Post and ghost. That's from Joe Rogan. You are. But uh, I did. Uh, you read me a lot of comments and I did read the comments again from this past week. So we'll wrap it up. But again, yeah. just want to say thank you. The support really made me feel good and kind of turned a page in my life. So I want to thank you guys for all that because it makes me realize what's important. My family. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. Make me cry. For real. And my friends, you know, that it's nice to, you know, go fishing with your old buddies and the neighborhood we live in and my great job and uh the people that you love, our parents, our families. That's what's important, you know? It is. And uh sometimes it goes over your head because we're trying to get that perfect picture on Instagram, you know, and focus on what's important. Yes. Very well said. All right. Thank you for, <laughs> that was good. Thank you for um, continuing to listen, download, subscribing. Y'all, if one little thing, if y'all are loving the podcast and you don't mind, write a review on the, what is it, the podcast app. I check those. We're like 4.9 stars, which is really good. And it's because of all of you. So if you are, if you don't like it, just don't write a review. <laughs> if you are Keep liking, it to yourself. Yeah, keep it to yourself. <laughs> but if you are liking the podcast and you don't mind and you have some free time and you're sitting in carpool, um, th that doesn't hurt to just do a little nice review. And if not, no worries. Be short. Yeah. Thanks I'll just hit, just hit five stars. That's all I care about. <laughs> Thanks for listening. That's all we care Thank about. Thank you. Yeah. Have a wonderful week and thank you for listening. <laughs>